Welcome to this GNS3 talk. Today's GNS3 talk is sponsored by SolarWinds, the open source sponsor of GNS3. As part of today's GNS3 talk, SolarWinds is offering you a free license to their engineer's standard tool set. This is valued at $200. And the important thing is it's not a trial license. You have a fully functional license to the standard engineer's tool set. The software includes a collection of fundamental tools to help you troubleshoot basic network issues, including network discovery and diagnostic tasks, and includes software such as the IP network browser, subnet list, traceroute, ping, enhanced ping, and ping sweep tools, plus many more. Click on the link below to get your copy of the engineer's standard tool set. Once again, this is a $200 value, but it's yours for free by using the link below. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to integrate the GNS3 GUI with the GNS3 VM. This video is based on GNS3 version 2.0, beta 2, or if you prefer, beta 2. In a previous video, which I've linked below, I'll show you how to download the GNS3 all-in-one software, how to install it, configure it, and get a basic Cisco network working. So in this video, I'm assuming that the GNS3 GUI is installed. So what we're doing here is downloading the GNS3 VM. In my example, I'm using a VMware workstation, but you could also do something similar using VirtualBox. So you need to go to the beta 2 version of GNS3 on GitHub. I've linked it below the video. And then you need to download the VirtualBox zip file or the workstation zip file. So download that to your local PC. In a separate video, I'll show you how to integrate with ESXi. Once the zip file has downloaded, Extract the file. In this example, I'm using a Windows 8 PC. And once again, I'm using GNS3 2.0 Beta 2 or Beta 2. And I'm using VMware Workstation 12. The process, however, is essentially the same, whether you're using Windows 10 or Windows 7. So once the file has extracted, you'll see that it contains an OVA file. And what you need to do is in VMware, go to File, Open, select the OVA file and click Open. Now this is important. Leave the name of the new virtual machine as GNS3 VM. You can move where the file is stored on your local hard drive but ensure that the name is GNS3 VM. Be careful. If you've already added a GNS3 VM previously, you're probably gonna to wanna to delete that before importing a new one. I'll show you in a separate video how to upgrade from GNS3 1.5 to version two. In this video, we're assuming that it's a new install of GNS3. So click Import. VMware Workstation will then import the GNS3 VM. So you just need to wait for that process to finish, and then you'll be able to go back to the GNS3 GUI to do the integration. Okay, so the GNS3 VM has imported, and it's imported with some default values. Leave those values as they are, and go to the GNS3 GUI. We'll use the GNS3 GUI to do some changes on the GNS3 VM. Now the easiest way to do the integration is to go to Help, Set Up Wizard. This wizard typically shows every time GNS3 starts up, unless you've told it not to show again. GNS3 supports multiple options. In the previous video, I showed you how to use Dynamips, in other words, a local GNS3 server with a Cisco IOS. Here, what we'll do is we'll run a Cisco IOS on the GNS3 VM. In other videos, I'll show you how to import appliances from the GNS3 marketplace and get iOS V and iOS V layer two working on the GNS3 VM. So in this video, I'm gonna choose modern iOS 
because we want to use the GNS3 VM. And I'm going to click Next. We've shown the local server configuration. I'm going to use the defaults and click Next. GNS3 confirms that the status of the local server is good. So I'm going to click Next. So this is the important piece. We want to integrate either VMware, which is the recommended way of doing it, or VirtualBox with the GNS3 GUI. So notice when I hover my mouse over the options, we can see that VMware is recommended to run QMU-based appliances. In other words, appliances such as iOS V, iOS V Layer 2, and so forth. As a rule of thumb, whenever you need nested virtualization, in other words, you're running a virtualization technology within your hypervisor, you're gonna to wanna to use VMware Workstation. VirtualBox does not support nested virtualization. So only use VirtualBox if you're gonna use Dynamips, IOU, or VPCS. If you're gonna use any of the viral appliances as an example, you're gonna to wanna to use VMware Workstation. So the moral of the story is, if you can, use VMware, because you'll have a better experience. So the GNS3 GUI has picked up that the GNS3 VM is available in VMware. That's why it's important that you leave the name as GNS3 VM in VMware Workstation. You can now specify the number of virtual CPU cores and the amount of RAM to allocate to the GNS3 VM. Now in this case, I'm using a Windows laptop and it doesn't have a lot of RAM, so I'm just gonna stick with two gig and click next. The GNS3 GUI contacts the GNS3 VM and automatically starts up the GNS3 VM. Depending on the speed of your PC, this process may be quick or may be slow. So in my example, this PC doesn't have a lot of processing power and RAM, so it takes a while for the GNS3 VM to boot up. But once it's booted up, in the GUI, we get a summary showing that the GNS3 VM is available, and we can click Finish. Now the next step is to decide what you're using. Are you using a Cisco IOS? Are you gonna use VPCS? Are you gonna use a Docker container? In this case, I'm gonna add a Cisco IOS image using a real Cisco IOS, but rather than running it locally, I'm gonna run it on the GNS3 VM. I'm gonna click OK. So now we have the option of either running the IOS on the GNS3 VM or running it locally. In the previous video, linked below, I ran the IOS on my local computer, but here we're gonna run it on the GNS3 VM so we're gonna select that option and click Next. We need to find the image to upload to the GNS3 VM. So I'm gonna to browse to my local hard drive, find the image. In this case, I'm using a 3725 image. And I'm gonna click Open. We then asked whether we wanna decompress the image. Typically, you wanna do this so that the image can boot up quicker. So I'm gonna click Yes. And notice what happens now. The image is uploaded to the GNS3 VM. Now once again, this depends on the size of the image and the speed of your laptop. In this case, my laptop doesn't have a lot of processing power or memory, so it's taking it a while to upload to the GNS3 VM. So you just need to wait for that process to complete. Once that process has completed, we can click Next. And now we can specify a name for this router. I'm gonna use the name C3725-VM because this router is running on the GNS3 VM. I'm then gonna click Next. Now make sure that you check the minimum and maximum RAM requirements of your router platform. I went through that in the previous video, so I won't bore you going through that here. Essentially, you need to make sure that the RAM that your router requires is set appropriately in the default RAM option. The minimum that my router requires is 256 meg, so I'm gonna specify that and click Next. I can then specify network adapters, so I'll specify two modules and add some WIC cards to the router and click Next. 
Now this is very important. You need to make sure that an idle PC value has been selected. If it hasn't been selected, then click the idle PC finder to find an idle PC value for your image. And now we can click finish. A summary is then displayed. We can see that we're using a C3725 router, but notice it's running on the GNS3 VM. This would display local for a local installation. Click OK. So what we can do now is drag a GNS3 VM router to the workspace in the GNS3 GUI and connect our devices and for example show labels zoom in make your diagram pretty and then click start to boot them up i'll click on console connect to all nodes to open up a console connection to both the routers And as you can see here, router one and router two have booted up. So what we could do is go onto the fast ethernet interface, no shut it, and give the router an IP address. I could do something similar on router two, no shut the interface, and give the router an IP address. So router two should be able to ping router one now and it's able to do that. I could, as an example, run a routing protocol. In this case, I'll run OSPF, put all interfaces into area zero, do the same on router one, show IP OSPF interface, and let's use brief. OSPF is now enabled on FOST Ethernet 00, and what should happen is we form a neighbor relationship. Once again, depending on how powerful your computer is, this may take a while. In the GNS3 GUI, I can see the amount of CPU and RAM used by the GNS3 VM, as well as by my local PC. So this Windows PC doesn't have a lot of RAM, and CPU, but what you'll notice is after a while, the neighbor relationship is established. So show IP OSPF neighbor. There's our neighbor relationship. It's full, so we should see routes advertised in the routing table. So let's add a route here of quadruple two. And show IP route again on router one. Once that route gets advertised, I should see it in the routing table, and there you go. Router 1 has learnt about the loopback of Router 2, and I can ping the loopback of Router 2. By the same token, I could create an IP address on the loopback of Router 1, and that will be advertised to Router 2. And there you go, so I can ping the loopback of Router 1. So in this video, I showed you how to download and integrate the GNS3 VM with the GNS3 GUI. In this example, I'm using version 2.0.0 beta 2 of GNS3. So here's the GNS3 VM running in this example within VMware Workstation. In this example, I've got the GNS3 GUI installed on a Windows 8 laptop. I hope you found this video useful. If you enjoyed it, please like the video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.